I thought I knew this answer, but I'm not sure. Have you ever had mezcal? I don't think I've ever actually had any of it straight. Uh, okay. I did actually have it in a mixed drink uh, at some point when I was out at, uh, there was a new restaurant in town that we went and, uh, and checked out. It was kind of like a wood-fired pizza place. Uh, and they had a mixed drink that was specifically like that. That was uh, mezcal and uh, some sweet. And I can't remember what actually was in the whole thing, to be honest with you. But I, I've had it then. I've never had it like, you know, neat. Straight. Okay. So, you, okay. I was thinking you had never had it at all. But either way, your exposure is limited. Very much so. Okay. I am limited to the, like I said, all I think of when I think of mezcal, I think smoky tequila. And that's a pretty good description. Oh, actually. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> that is kind of, yes, that's a good way to, a good way to talk about it. Anyway. Okay. And the reason why I ask this question is yes. because I, I think we might have one to try here. You kid, For I, the very first time ever at About Beverages, this is something brand new to our show. And we've tried many things over the years. Not everything, but many things. That's true. We never have had this. But it has been requested by several viewers, listeners, uh, emails, comments, suggestions. Mezcal has been something that people have reached out to us uh, with that we should start trying. And this is going to be our first foray for this. Give it a shot. I'm Andrew. And I'm Keith. And we are aboutbeverages.com. And the beverage that we're about today is the Espada Pequeña Mezcal. Um, Espada Pequeña actually means little sword. It seems like something you wouldn't Small want to brag play, about. Yeah, but, but uh, hey, that's, sure. uh, that's what that means. But, hey, uh, it's how you use it. Hey. So how did <laughs> yeah, they use right. that Espada Pequeña to make this Mezcal? <laughs> to make the Mezcal. That's, that's right. right. Okay. Uh, and this comes to us uh, directly, uh, it comes from, uh, from Trader Joe's, which is uh, okay. where I work. Uh, this is relatively new, just about a month old in stores. And, um, and yeah, and Mezcal, uh, which like so we're still learning a little bit about and reading and doing more, but Mezcal is, is made from the agave plant, not as specific. Uh, there are certain types of uh, agave plants that tequila needs to be made from, but Mezcal, I think, is a little more broad okay. in that. And Mezcal is made in uh, pits uh, it's, uh, that are in the earth, actually. And so that's what creates a little more smokiness, which tequila is made with, uh, is in fired, fired in um uh, ovens that like are, stills or something yeah or that like are the... that are not buried and oh, so there's okay. not as much smokiness going on there but yeah so, so this is the scotch of tequilas this well and that's so, i'm making a lot of references here no, that no, don't no, need no, to that's, be <laughs> no i honestly um uh, uh last year actually when we were in mexico one of the restaurants at the resort we stayed at had a little um uh they did they served a different type of uh, beverage with all the different courses and oh. the first one actually was a mezcal and that's exactly what i since you said it already it's not like i'm revealing anything i did i thought it was kind of like a, a tequila meat scotch kind of thing okay uh, going on so that sounds have, awesome and i have no idea yeah and that's why i was like we need to try one of those so um it's taken a while and, yeah uh, it, it's but, been a long uh, road we've eventually gotten there and so yeah we're gonna we have that so well awesome uh like i said uh, we did not uh, initially have the bottle on the table just because it was so tall so uh, tall. We wanted yeah, like, it to be a little bit of a surprise reveal. A little bit of a surprise reveal. Like I said, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I wouldn't know, know if I'd call this a, a spot of pequeña. I would call this maybe like a, uh -huh. it's tall pequeña <laughs> something. It's still slender. It's uh, a slender bottle. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, so is there like an aging that goes along with this kind of stuff? I don't not, think so. I read no. some of the literature that yeah, you had. Not, every, so not, I not that I read, at least okay. with this specific one. There's with this no, one, okay. Yeah, because like yeah. with tequila, you've got your reposados and añejos and extra añejos, which mm -hmm. means they've, uh, you know, rested in in, uh, in oak barrels for a certain period of time. But <laughs> this one, obviously being clear, probably has spent no time. Or, I would or think very so. very little time in there. So this so. is probably just the smoking that went on. with the Just due to, yeah, being uh, due to the... Um, the, well, as they say, da, 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 roast, it's roasted in conical underground pits, a process which both releases the agave nectar from the plant and gives it its signature smoky notes. Okay. So, so well, I am very excited. Notes. We are going to skip over uh, color because clear is Quite not obvious. anything interesting to talk about. So That's let's right. go right to the aroma. There's a lot more complexity there than I was expecting. Um, like I thought it was just literally going to be like what we joked about, smoky tequila. Smoky tequila. I am getting that. It's definitely like initially like the kind of the fruit you would normally get out of the agave plant uh, tequila. But then the smoke that's there also to me turns into almost like uh, like leather, like leather, like jacket or like fret, like new leather, like in a car. Like there's kind of that like it's not new car smell, but it's like like there's a leather, like a, you know, a well-worn something like, you know, if you have a really expensive, which I don't. But if people had like a really expensive you know, like pair of shoes or a leather jacket or something, it's got some worn to it. And then it went through, you know, like that campfire definitely is, is still there. But there's kind of three layers there for me, like I said, between the sweet and the fruit, 
Yeah. And then like those other couple little things. I don't get a lot of smokiness in it. Actually. Really? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I was expecting more. I get, it's funny when you said that about the leather, all of a sudden I, the, the uh, whiff I took when you were saying that I thought of beef jerky. So like that's oh. kind of like smoked meat, spices, yeah, things sure. like that, but very mild. Uh, more, most of what I get is, is some like citrusy, very light fruit. Okay. Yeah. I get that right but at the very, very beginning. But like very, I said, then yeah. I get those other things. I mean, it's a decent, like, 60 40 kind of thing but yeah. i think there's a little more to me of the of that leather smoky component um like it, but it is almost like it's it's almost like that there's a little bit of like reposado or something in there too because it's almost like even though i know there probably wasn't it's almost like there is some aging or like some wood with that which would play into the smoke obviously so right the wood like a little woodiness leather smoke uh and the fruit are the things right. i get so that's that definitely smells good okay yeah, yeah no, i'm it's pretty excited about that yeah. okay okay do you know do most people normally uh most people have you heard the way people normally do they usually if they're do they usually have this on the rocks? Do they usually go more neat uh, when you when you think about, you know, like bourbons and whiskeys, usually more people do neat. And then there's right. kind of that other you know group. They're like, oh, I got to throw some ice in it or what. Like, do you know much about I don't if I had to make a guess, I would bet it's probably more of a oh, should I maybe take this recipe that I used to kilo for? And should I put some mezcal in it and right. try that? I don't know if it's necessarily like a sipping thing, although it certainly can be. Okay. Uh, but I, but yeah, that would be just, just a guess. For some reason, I don't know why it seemed like a more on the rocks <clears> thing <throat> to me. Like, I don't know if I've just seen people like doing it, but yeah. th- that was what it hit me. That's why the question came up. Mezcal so. on the rocks? Yeah. Exactly. Ain't no big surprise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. I know what you went over there. All right. Let's just go over the taste. Well, I found the smoke. Yeah. It's yeah. not overwhelming, but it's definitely there. It's definitely a nice blend. Um, I think the I, and I'm just comparing to the only one, the other one that I've ever really had. That one had more of a peaty almost taste, which is why I think I thought of scotch. I don't necessarily think of scotch with this, I but there agree. is a but there is a nice smoky quality to it that I think balances out that fruit mm-hmm. um, and makes it um, not complex but not simple either it's just it's it's got a like a two or three note three notes and it and it hits them all i think in the right and the right balance yeah i would agree i think i'm getting like pretty much the same things that i talked about uh initially in, in the nose i am getting again here as well i'm getting the little bit of the the sweet and the fruit that's coming through from the agave you know that like I said that uh you know that agave plant uh you know kind of coming through um the smoke definitely is a little more present it's kind of over it's overlapping and uh, washing over that leather that I got in the aroma that that kind of thing is. Uh, so it's a little bit more of that smoke. Yeah, I don't think the smoke is uh, it doesn't bring in some of those smoked peat qualities. Like I said, it literally is kind of standing on its own just as a, you know, uh, that campfire smoke kind of thing. Right. It does not seem overdone. Uh, like I said, at all. I think it actually yeah. is fair. It's fairly well balanced. I wonder because um, what, what proof is this? This is 40. 40. Yeah. I wonder if like if this just had a little more proof or a little more something out, like maybe it was more like 90 or 100 proof, if that would just bring a little more layer of something to it. A little more heat. It would bring Maybe a little more heat or just a little more viscosity because it seems a little thin maybe. Um, like Again, this is from someone that has not had it, sipped any mezcal. So like I said, this is just kind of like what I would want in sipping this. Like, oh, what am I missing? To me, I wouldn't mind just a little more of... Just something, yeah. Maybe yeah. a little more heat punch from the alcohol or whatever. But the rest of it, honestly, I think it's a pretty good uh, several layers of flavor, and I think would probably work well in a mixed drink. A mixed drink, you say? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe. I think we should try one. Do you have one in mind that we could tack on to the end of I this do. podcast? I do. I think we're going to do a, an About Beverages uh, take on a Paloma. Okay. Which uh, is, I guess, typically made with tequila, but can also be used with mezcal. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We've read through several articles, several recipes. Yes. <laughs> um, and so we're just going to kind of take the the overwhelming overlap of some of those. And we may or may not add soda to it. We're not sure. Yeah, we've seen that also in a few out. of them. We're going to, like I said, so we're going to get this mixed. Uh, we're going to take a little break. Uh, we're going to go mix up this drink and then we'll come back and tell you the recipe we actually used. We will have a link to it uh, down in the show notes here at the end, uh, not only on YouTube, but on our website. Um, so we will be Harris Heller will entertain you. That's right. Harris Heller will entertain you all. If you're watching us live on twitch.tv With a sudden embrace, if, if you're not, it'll just be a quick little something, something. <laughs> all right. See you in a minute. All right, we are back. We went and uh, did a little bit of an about beverages take on the Paloma. 
the Paloma yeah, kind of combined uh, a few recipes together. Right. Um, a lot of things have similar threads when we looked up initially. Right. Usually it involves tequila. There are some people that say throw out the mezcal option. Uh, and so obviously that's what we've gone with since right. that's what we were tasting earlier in the podcast. But uh, what uh, recipe did we actually throw together? Well, so oh, the actual recipe was more based on when we found it bon appetit actually of all Correct. places but um they like so there was overlapping themes of pineapple lime juice some involved agave nectar some salt grapefruit so, uh, great uh, i'm sorry i said pineapple you did that's okay though. that's okay though. that sounds okay um, though. but uh, <laughs> that would probably work hey pineapple but yeah no just great, grapefruit new. juice was the biggest overlapper Could we, yeah should we start no that's not we're good okay all right <laughs> uh yeah the overlapping themes of the grapefruit the lime the agave nectar salt um, so we uh, did two ounces of the mezcal, uh, one ounce of grapefruit. I almost said pineapple. <laughs> That's okay. One ounce of grapefruit, a half ounce of lime, and uh, and then a half ounce of agave yes. as well, and then a pinch of salt. Just a little bit of salt then so, uh, in there as well yeah. to kind of bring out the flavors. So, um, so the that's other what thing, we have here. yeah. So the other thing that people always mention too is they talk about putting either some sort of grapefruit uh, like seltzer or soda in there, or some right. sort of seltzer water if you want to make it more of a fizzier type drink. Uh, we opted just to keep it this way to kind of make it more of a heartier, yep. like sipping uh, cocktail. I even so. saw Club Soda uh, <clears throat> mentioned in some okay. of the things that if you didn't want to add that sweetness, if you actually used, um, you know, the, the grapefruit juice or actually squeezed grapefruit uh, fresh and did it that way, you could dilute it that way. And and that would, you know, obviously, if you wanted to dilute the alcohol and be able to enjoy it a little bit, um, you know, more beverage and have less right. alcohol effect so sure um all right so what are yeah. we getting for uh, obviously we won't really talk about color one no. it looks like grapefruit juice yeah. <laughs> we'll smoke a little grapefruit yeah we'll, yeah we'll smoke a little grapefruit i even do get the lime actually does kind of pop out there there is like a little yeah. extra note of citrus that comes at the through. end it kind of um, yeah pops out. but it's a really wonderful smelling like i said beverage cocktail like i said i think it's i think it smells awesome like definitely i could see this initially like i'm thinking almost breakfast breakfast you know you know what you need when you wake up right i need a paloma please i need a paloma paloma please. with mezcal. it's almost 8 a.m i need yeah. a paloma yeah. and make it a mezcal paloma. i gotta get going <laughs> i gotta get going i don't know why we're from jersey all of a sudden hey, but it is. hey hey <laughs> all right there's a lot going on in there but it's all in harmony i think you got the bitter with the grapefruit you got the smokiness that comes out the little um the lime adds a little liveliness to it um it, I wouldn't mind having that rim of salt on there. You that mentioned that as be, we were making it. I would agree. It wouldn't even, uh, I mean, it doesn't need it, but it would definitely add that that even little extra bit of pop on there, but it's good. Yeah, if you actually had fresh grapefruit uh, like and had done that for either squeezing in there or whatever, you could take like the rind and do a little grapefruit kind of around the rim there and put right. your salt that way. I think that honestly would be would be delicious. Um, I No, I 100% agree. I think this is a well-balanced uh, drink and... I'm sure tequila would be fine, but I think the mezcal, honestly, like I think this is a hundred percent the way to go. If you are into that little bit of kind of yeah. bacon smoky kind of uh, finish, I think it honestly is great because of the sweet and the tart in there. And it's definitely not as forward as obviously when you're having it neat, but there's just that, it's just that little finish. It's like, Ooh, I'm, I'm in a jazz club all of a sudden. There's like this smoky jazz thing going it, on at the is, very yeah. end of, yeah. you know, the bright lights of the neon as you walked in is the grapefruit and the lemon and the, or the lime right. and everything else. And then and you then get the lingering. It, yeah. And then the lingering, like, smoky. Just kinda, yeah, I, yeah. I honestly think this is delicious. This yeah. would honestly be difficult, <laughs> especially this, like I could probably just drink this yeah. whole thing down and ask for another, be like, Another one, please. No, no, please. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is fantastic. Like, I, I do think the smoky comes out really like it's really enhanced in a different way. Um, but yet still, once again, still blends in with everything. It's not like you feel like you're just drinking smoke. No, uh, it's there, but it's, it's just, a, it's a perfectly blended part of this drink. So yeah, I definitely, this is something I'm definitely going to add to my repertoire of some sort. I don't know if it'll be the mezcal that we had in general, but it, it definitely worked great in this drink. And honestly, don't think it was a bad sipper. I don't have a lot to compare it to. So we'll see in the future weeks and months as we try some more of them, if there's like, oh, that's where you get this depth right. or, or, you know, maybe it might be the other way. I'd be like, you know what? Really? That first one we had for that value for and 20, that price. And it was 20, I think it's 21 20 bucks. bucks. Yeah. Oh, is it? 20? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I think it's like I said, this has honestly opened my eyes to uh, another realm of beverages that we can uh, start enjoying that we will start podcasting on for sure. Um, and if you want to see previous podcasts, like maybe ones that we did on tequila, we did whole episodes oh, on tequila, lots of tequila way back in the day. There was only audio for those. So if you want those, some of those ones that were originally only audio, we didn't have video going on about beverages.com is your place to go for all of those, the archive of everything that we've ever done. 
Um, if you only want the newer videos like this, the most current things that we've done, YouTube, great place to go for that. Obviously, mm -hmm. you can hit the subscribe button, always get our latest content as soon as it arrives. We appreciate that. Uh, it really does make a huge difference. And um, audio versions. We have audio stuff, too. Like if you we want do. the newer audio things, like you don't want to waste your bandwidth on seeing these two guys. You just right. want to hear what we have to just say. Just listen. Yeah. If you just want to listen, yeah. where are you going? Oh, you can go to iTunes. You can go to Spotify. That's one of the newer ones. And pretty much seems like we've been hearing from a lot of people that we're on places we didn't even realize. But wherever you get your, uh, you know, <laughs> like uh, iHeartRadio, um, Google Podcasts, uh, seems like wherever you may get your podcast content, hopefully we'll be there. Hopefully we will be there. And then on top of that, if you actually want to be hearing things from us throughout the week, current, current things, when yes. we're going live, when we're dropping the podcast, just our thoughts on other beers that we may be having other spirits, anything. Uh, we've got three pillars of social media that we always like to promote that we always like to hit. And we appreciate if you'd follow us there as well. And those are Facebook, good one, Instagram, and Twitter, which is the one we use most often. Um, Andrew will let you know what he's doing throughout the week when he's gaming, when he's when he's live uh, doing his his non beverage thing. Well, he's still doing beverages. But it's true, I'm still gaming, having a beverage, the gaming I, and beverage yeah, thing. It's the combo. Uh, we will tweet also and let you know when we're going live, which is most Thursday nights. Uh, you can find us uh, any. Well, it depends on uh, on certain things, but you can might find us any time in between five thirty and six thirty uh, Pacific time on Twitch TV slash About Beverages. We were uh, we record our podcast during that time, but we're also you know hanging out. We're in chat. We're interacting with our viewers and uh, followers and subscribers, and just having a lot of fun and talking about more than beverages. Actually, we talk about movies. We talk about obviously games game yeah. the new releases of gaming consoles that's true uh and just whatever whatever just happens to pop up we will be happy to uh listen to you and chat with you so so join us at twitch.tv slash about beverages but as we always say whether we like it or not you should give it a shot